I really don't care if you guys think that black women are attempting to play the victim or having a victim mindset because it really is a fact that black women and black feminine presenting people are some of the most unprotected and oppressed people in this country, if not the world. Breonna Taylor was asleep. Sandra Bland was detained in the back of a cop car and Sonia Massey's last words were, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry. And yet you still have people trying to justify why it is that they were murdered. If that doesn't scream, most hated, I don't know what does. Sonia Massey knew that there was something wrong with that man the minute she opened the door. And the fact that her mental health diagnosis is being used to invalidate what she knew that officer was going to do is disgusting. And at this point, I am just over giving my energy to people saying, well, why does it have to be about race? We didn't see the full body cam footage and it's clear he feared for his life. It's the same lazy, dumbass argument you always make. Well, it is 2024 and if there was ever a year you wanted to get some shit off your chest, it's, it's now. Just say you hate black women and go. Because all this deflection, all these tired ass arguments, they're just going to continue being ignored. Y'all wanna know how a blush day should show up on dark skin? Like, this is the KVD Good Apple. Blush Bomb Duo in the shade Red Meadow. I'm going in with the red, just straight on the skin. Oh. You see it, it's not casket ready. Look at how pretty that blush is. Boots. Like, oh my God, look at that. You see how it can be naturally flush without being ashy. You're not known to be a humble man, but I wonder. I think I am actually humble. I think I'm much more humble than you would understand. As you Keep Palestinians' names out of your mouth when you're trying to defend your decision for voting for Kamala. I'm starting to see a lot of these videos coming out and I feel like someone really, really has to speak on it. So I'm going to. And I'm going to tell this with all my due respect. Palestine is not the only country that's dealing with genocide right now. I am from Congo, in case you cannot tell. I'm from Congo, okay? We are also dealing with genocide in Congo. In fact, the genocide in Congo has been going for way longer than the genocide in Palestine. The genocide in Congo has made 8 millions of victims. 8 millions. And you might wonder, why am I making this video? Well, I am making this video because I am going to support Vice President Kamala. 100% I'm going to. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to support Vice President Kamala. Listen to me. This is one of the Congolese genocide enabler. His name is Dan Gettler. This guy is an Israeli billionaire who owns mines in Congo. This guy was sanctioned in 2017 by President Barack Obama for corrupt and illegal mining. Listen very carefully. He was sanctioned by Obama. Obama is a Democrat, okay? This dude got re reinstated. Someone gave him his money back. Someone gave him his money back. Do you know who did that? Donald Trump. Donald Trump gave him his money back. It was one of the very last thing he did as a president was to give this guy his money back. And do you know who sanctioned this guy again? President Biden. President Biden sanctioned him again. So currently, this person does not have his money. All the money, all the illegal money he made in Congo, he does not have it right now because of President Biden. So one thing I know for sure, one thing I know for sure, Vice President Kamala, she's not going to let this guy get his money back. And another thing that I know for sure is that if Trump gets back in office, Trump is going to reinstate this guy. Trump is going to give him his money back. How do you think Israel is getting all that money? Because of this guy. He's one of the people who are giving money to Israel. So if you want to stop this guy hmm, from getting his money back and potentially giving that money to Israel, make sure that Trump does not make it. Now let's be real for a second because I feel like a lot of people don't take this part in consideration. Listen, a lot of people have lost their jobs for supporting Palestine. A lot of content creators got the account banned for supporting Palestine. A lot of people got hurt physically for protesting for Palestine. 
a lot of people have ruined their relations with their families and friends simply because they were on the side of Palestine. So if you're going to tell all these people who have sacrificed so much for your cause that they are wrong for choosing a candidate who's going to preserve their rights in their own country, then I'm sorry to tell you this, but you are being both ungrateful and disingenuous. Okay, hey, what's your question? So I know I'm not supposed to notice these things or ask these questions, but it needs to be noticed and the questions need to be asked. A spicy question. All right, what do you got? So I've lived in a nice suburb of Columbus for about five years now. A nice suburb of Columbus. I hope that's not a euphemism for a predominantly white suburb of Columbus. And since moving in, slowly but surely, all of my neighbors have become foreigners. I don't like where this is going. Nobody speaks English. All of them look at me like I'm the odd man out. Like, what's this white girl doing here? Okay, so now we're equating white with nice and white with American. And not sure if you heard, but America doesn't actually have a national language. So whether they speak English or not, it should be irrelevant. If I go to the pool, uh, it's almost all Spanish speaking or Middle Eastern speaking. Okay, I'm no linguist, but I don't know what Middle Eastern speaking is. Like, I am one of the only English speaking Americans in my complex. There you go again with that only English speaking American, as if you can't be American unless you speak English. That doesn't seem right to me. How is this okay? What doesn't seem right to you? That America has more than white people who speak English? Seems kind of racist. I, an American, am being conquered, basically, in my own home. Wait, you said conquered. So they're like coming into your home, taking land that isn't theirs and forcing you out? Is, is that what's happening here? So I'm not even talking about race. I'm not talking about race. Oh, thank God you're not talking about race because I could have swore when you said that you're white and you speak English and there are Spanish and Middle Eastern speaking people there you're pretty much making it about race, but I'm glad to know you're not making it about race. When I see a fellow black person- But fellow black person? D does she realize she's not black? I'm like, yes, you're an American. Like, thank you for being here with me side by side. Cause I, I, it has nothing to do with race. Nothing to do with race? How do you think black people arrived in the United States and why? I'm, I'm speaking about fellow Americans being pushed out of their homes and uh, being conquered. There's that conquered word again. I, I don't think that word means what you think it means. By people who aren't from here, people who don't speak our language. You know, you're in Columbus, Ohio, and speaking of being conquered by people who don't speak their language, uh, the Native Americans who were indigenous to the Ohio region have all been pushed out by people who didn't speak their language. I wonder who did that. This doesn't seem like a strength for us. The, this diversity thing doesn't seem like a, it's going good. So it's not about race, but apparently diversity is not going well. So it is about race, right? Am I being irrational? Am I being irrational? Yeah, you're being pretty irrational. Although I would rephrase irrational to racist. I feel uncomfortable in the fact that I'm like the only one of my uh, neighbors that speaks English and actually has an ancestry here in America. Yeah, you're wrong, but also now we know why Native Americans who are indigenous to that land are no longer there. It seems that they were conquered by someone's ancestors. I think that this is perfectly natural to be upset that my home is being conquered by foreigners. There's that word conquered again. I really don't think that word means what you think it means. Where are my fellow Americans? We're all right here and we're not all white and we speak hundreds if not thousands of different languages. And can we just appreciate the irony of this woman objecting to Middle Eastern people while having Christian in her bio and Jesus being literally Middle Eastern? Like imagine being so racist that you would call the cops on the person you worship if you showed up at your pool. <laughs> what? I just find it hilarious. 
that these MAGA Republicans who try to present themselves as objective and fair-minded and say, I don't see color, suddenly see color real well when that color isn't their own complexion for protection. Imagine if women couldn't wear makeup. Ooh, I love imagining. Hit me with it. Tell me about it, because if women really could not wear makeup and it was actually illegal to wear, these girls would be so down bad it's not even funny. Wait, are, are you just discovering right now what makeup is and how it works? Men would actually understand that these girls are really not that cute as y'all think, and it's just the truth. Because I feel like if you're an adult man who has dated women before, who has like, stayed at their place or they've stayed at yours, none of this should be surprising. Men in the society see a version of these girls that is covered with makeup and it's not the real them. Like you have had a relationship with a woman that lasted long enough that you saw her without her makeup on, right? I'm just saying, like you see an example right here. Girl on the left has makeup and the girl on the right is the same exact girl just without makeup. It's actually mind blowing, bro. I have to think that this is mind blowing in the same way that it is mind blowing. When you see those videos of toddlers who see their dad for the first time after he's like shaved his beard off and they don't recognize that he's the same person. Do you also suffer from object impermanence maybe? Like makeup should be illegal. How do you not see that this is catfishing? This is 100% catfishing. Catfishing? So you thought that the makeup was like a, a permanent feature? of her face. Like, I realize that women frequently make fun of us for not being able to tell when they are or aren't wearing makeup. This though is like on a whole other different level. Look, I'm a leftist and I know that leftist and online spaces can be really annoying, but is it not weird to y'all to mock people for not wanting to vote for someone complicit in genocide? Like, like that's a that's a pretty valid reason. Uh, like, I'm a big supporter of voting. I think that everyone should always vote, especially for down ballot stuff. But like, if someone looks at me and I'm like, oh, why aren't why aren't you voting? And they go, ah, you know, I know one of these people is worse than the other, but both of them are kind of complicit in genocide. I'd be like, eh, that yeah, that's a that's a that's a real reason. It's weird because my opinions are pretty consistent, but people only remember my opinion of the last video. So like. Last week, people were yelling at me about how I was doing work for the Republicans by being critical of Kamala Harris. And then when I was like, oh, Tim Walz was a good pick, people were like, ah, oh, you finally took the DNC money, you shill. And through all that, seeing all these different arguments pop up in my comments section, I'm like, do you guys not think it's like a part of the responsibility of the party that is campaigning to win over voters, especially if they've held power over the last four years and made some decisions that have disillusioned those voters. It's like their whole thing that they, they, they have to do that. Like you have to address the concerns of your constituents. And even while like overall America is still very split when it comes to Israel and Palestine, like 83% of Democrats want a ceasefire. And that's not discussing like the, the solution that's one state, two state, like that's not even discussing that. I'm just saying like 83% of Democrats want the fighting to at least stop. I just need to go check my numbers and it's like 65% of independents. And so like generally would have been a strategically good move to while not even guaranteeing like a long lasting solution, at least brokering a real ceasefire, like a real long standing ceasefire. And to be quite clear, we have the power to push that needle. Like we, we got it. So, you know, maybe stop treating these people like they're just like cartoon hippies who are like, we just, I'm just not voting, man. I just wanna smoke weed in my, like, like it's, a, it's a fair concern. Hey, so 31 minutes into this video and Mr. Beast definitely broke the Geneva Convention on several levels. And I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. I'm not laughing, I'm incredulous. <coughs> I'm a historian. This is... If MK Ultra never happened, Mr. Beast would have invented it. The first text this guy get first, I, I I don't know who this guy is, but the the guy in the video titled uh, "I Worked for Mr. Beast," he's a sociopath that had to do the solitary confinement. 
A, you're funny as fuck, okay? Stellar that you're a comedian. I hope people support you. I, if you do a show near me, I will go. You're awesome. I'm sorry this happened to you. This is like, I know you know it's traumatic. I'm just talking into the ether. Like, that, that reads like a creepypasta. You know what I'm saying? It's so absurd. Well, at least you get to, he's like, at least you get to keep the money you earned and then like cut it in. Th hey man, you're stronger than me. I would have actually gone to a federal penitentiary and been in solitary confinement for what I would have done. You are very brave and strong. You deserve a fucking medal of, they need to give you a gold medal and extradite Mr. Beast. James, not Jimmy, you're a grown fucking man. James needs to be extradited to hell. Hi, here's a presentation on how gay is your Stardew Valley romance choice. You can always tell if a twink has discovered cigarettes or poppers first, and in this case, we have a textbook cigarette first twink. Physical evidence that Chaparone plays Stardew Valley, because there is no way Haley was not in mind when writing Good Luck Band. The monkey's paw of being a gay man is that the quickest way to get over your bullies is to be attracted to them, and they knew that when making Alex. Harvey is the poster child for men who are always the last guy a woman dates before she finds out she likes girls. You know how characters can be written in like the male or female gaze? This is the epicenter of the lesbian gaze character. I cannot put in a video what girls would do for Abigail for fear of being demonetized. This is what every down low hookup looks like for gay men. Like, this man will rock your world and then send you off with a handshake. Blue hair and a gemstone obsession. I don't have to say much more on this. I know enough lesbians to know that if you run into a woman who's good at woodworking, you hold on to that goddess and you white knuckle never let go until you both meet the grave. You know what? I'm calling it a straight choice. Not straight women, straight men, because I think every straight man on some level wants to date Goku. I don't know a single man that would bat an eye at Mario, but I know hundreds of women that would dismantle entire nations for a single date with this nerd. Straightest choice in my opinion. Like, oh, I like her because she's quiet and submissive. Like, let's, let's unpack that a little. Hi, here's which characters in Stardew Valley can say the, the word for gay people that's definitely not good. George says it, but you don't really care because the bigger fight is that he says much, much worse words. There is no way Pam did not have an enormous lezzy face in her 20s. She can say it. He can say it, not necessarily because he's queer, but because in my mind, he likes to make potions that make bigots realize they're trans. Cannot say it and never would. This bundle of pixels was made for sword enthusiast lesbians, and he knows that. This diva is the reason Emily can't walk on Sundays. She can absolutely say it. Cannot say it and does not say it. He would be absolutely stupid to alienate 95% of his clientele like that. He says it because someone convinced him it's a fish species. Like, it's cool. He can say Cannot it. Cannot say it. Says it. Has no idea what it means. Cannot say it. Says it. Knows exactly what it means. Staying in his lane king. Would never say it, but totally can if he wants to. He can do no wrong in my book. A quote that I keep coming back to over and over again in my life and in the work that I'm doing is one that I first heard from Dr. Maya Angelou. The truth is, no one of us can be free until everybody is free. And I know it's quoted often in justice spaces, but I want to map out an example of how this applies to Project 2025, which is the white, straight, conservative Christian male agenda for the United States, meaning that everyone who doesn't fall into that category of human will be negatively impacted by this. This is the 922-page MAGA manifesto. We printed the whole thing out, and it's brought to you by one of the most conservative DC think tanks, the Heritage Foundation. Heritage does such an incredible job, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America, and that's coming. According to Heritage, to Heritage President Kevin Roberts, this is a Christian nationalist plan to end what he calls the Great Awakening and, quote, rescue our kids, reclaim our culture, revive our economy, and defeat the anti-American left at home and abroad. You may have heard a few people say that Project 2025 is already here, it's already happening, and this is absolutely true. And if you haven't noticed that, I think it's probably for one of two reasons. Number one is that you probably weren't a part of the groups that were negatively impacted by the initial legislation and laws. And number two, religion or religious beliefs may be preventing you from seeing these things very clearly. I think one of the things that will take us further into overt fascism is our inability to find common ground and advocate for one another and see common ground in our struggles. Last year broke the record for most anti-LGBT legislation pushed in American history. Over 500 anti 
gay bills were introduced in 2023 was triple the amount that were introduced in 2022. But so many people were silent because they don't really care about gay or queer folks anyway and the Bible says blah 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 blah. We've seen laws that target immigration and immigrants, many of whom came here because of violence that the United States is funding in their home countries. But people were silent because they take in our jobs and they don't belong here anyway. We saw states like Oklahoma forcing teachers to begin teaching the Bible. Louisiana forcing teachers to put the Ten Commandments up in all the classrooms. Making people who practice Islam or Buddhism or African traditional religions. Everyone who's not Christian in the land of religious freedom being now forced to walk in the classroom spaces with the writings on the wall. Thou shalt have no other gods before the white Christian God. The very first commandment. The writing on the wall that says thou shalt not steal even though by doing this they're robbing people of their humanity. Or thou shalt not kill even though we're actively funding genocide and pushing legislation that harms people. Life or death legislation. But again some people were silent. Because what's wrong with teaching the Bible right? These kids need Jesus anyway. But then we saw affirmative action struck down. Then the DEI initiatives that came from the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. And the Chevron deference ruling. And the Roe v. Wade decision etc. And now a Trump campaign promises to give police immunity from prosecution. Giving them even further leeway to kill my black ass without consequence. And we're going to give our police their power back and we're going to give them immunity from prosecution. So they're not prosecuted for doing their job. They began further criminalizing homelessness to crack down on encampments. And now we're talking about Project 2025, four months before the election. This government will continue to close in on the most marginalized amongst us because they've already manufactured consent from you, you the people, to do so. Meaning, for example, they know some of y'all don't care about LGBT folks for whatever reason you tell yourself, religious or otherwise, so much so that you would be okay with them coming for your cousin, your family, your friends. So much so that they are okay with taking away people's human rights right under your nose in the name of religion, as long as it ain't you. Like Chance the Rapper said on First World Problems, Y'all just gonna keep clapping and keep acting like Flint got clean water. Or y'all don't got teen daughters or black friends or gay cousins. Y'all just don't say nothing. But rest assured, this agenda is coming for everyone who doesn't fit the description that I gave earlier. White, straight, Christian, conservative, male. And they will be successful as long as we allow harm to come to the most marginalized and oppressed among us. All because we're safe and comfortable. That is the message behind the poem I shared sometime earlier. And it's true for what's happening in the United States and for what the United States is doing in other parts of the world. This poem by Kashif Andrew Graham. Esther 413, the New American Protest Bible. And Mordecai replied to Esther, Don't think that because you sleep behind a white picket fence in American City, U.S. of A, that they will not one day sterilize you, segregate you, stigmatize you, surveil you, silence you, subvert you, as they have done to others when you kept your mouth sipping on a lavender latte. We have to see that our struggles are a bridge that connect us to other people. And if we don't have a firm grasp on that and what it means, what it really means, then our path to collective liberation, collective freedom will be much more difficult. So if you're really concerned about Project 2025, if you want to stop America's further fall into fascism, into a theocracy, you have to want to stop it even when the laws aren't directly impacting you. You have to see your struggle as being connected to the people struggling around you. Because it is. It absolutely is. And them convincing you that it's not, and you believing them, is how they win. You're going to have to get into community. You're going to have to speak up and take action even when you're not being directly impacted. You might even have to reimagine your relationship to religion as a whole because they're hiding behind religious language to get off what they're trying to do to people. Ziklag is a secretive network of ultra-wealthy Christians, conservative Christians, who have this two-part goal, two-part vision for this country. One is to get heavily involved in the 2024 elections, mobilizing pastors, knocking people off the voting rolls, demonizing trans people to motivate conservative voters, Ziklag's goal is nothing less than moving the country toward a state of Christian nationalism, having biblical worldviews, quote unquote, biblical truth, shaping, influencing every part of American culture. A great example is the Jesus Gets Us campaign that started around the Super Bowl. People were celebrating that campaign without realizing the people behind that campaign are also sponsors of Project 2025, without realizing those commercials were a part of a sliver of a billion dollar campaign meant to reintroduce Jesus to a disengaged public. This is your reminder that the hundreds of millions of dollars financing this He Gets Us campaign are tied to a conservative nonprofit in Kansas. This is the same organization that invests tens of millions of dollars into organizations like the Alliance Defending Freedom. The Alliance Defending Freedom is listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as an anti-LGBTQ hate group, and the ADF is also directly involved in the building of Project 2025. They're one of the very first names listed on the advisory board. They realize that there's a problem in religious engagement and they're trying to fix it, because religion is used for social control. So we're wanting to say, we being a lot of different people, that he gets us, he understands all of us, 
He hates who he loves who we hate. He loves who we hate. Like what's going on here? So like I said, you might have to reimagine a relationship to religion. There are people like Christian A. Smith, Ciara, the gardening theologian, D. Daniel Thomas, aka Unfit Christian, myself, and others who have plenty of content already helping folks do just that. Because in the words of Cole Arthur Riley, if your spirituality does not demand the beauty and liberation for every person and piece of the cosmos, it is not God that you are seeking, but a shallow ritual of self-soothing. In the moment that we find ourselves in, if your religion is a pacifier, if it keeps you silent, if it renders you immobile, you should reevaluate your relationship to that religion. And if love is at the center of your religion, then let that love be rooted in justice and freedom for all who have breath. And then it will be so much easier to see the difference in those who just use the language of love and those who practice and embody it. Love and liberation to you all. And as always, like and follow for more content.